Ms Patton. Uh, thank you, President, and um, I'm very pleased to join in this condolence motion today. Um, John Kane, the member for Bundura, the Labor leader, three-term Premier, husband to Nancy, father to John, James, Joanna, grandfather and great-grandfather. He was a true son of Northern Metropolitan. His father, the 34th Premier, was the long-serving member for Jigger Jigger, later named Northgate. And his mother, a successful businesswoman with a string of millinery stores throughout the North. And as a child, he ran through the schoolyards of Bell Primary, spent many years at the historic Northgate High School, and of course, um, the University of Melbourne. And I think today it's been a great privilege to, to hear the many contributions um, from you all. And also, while I wasn't at the memorial service, I listened to it on the radio and it was just such a delight. And um, I think as, as Mr Atkinson said, to, to hear those achievements and to hear what one man was able to do um, is not, it's daunting, but obviously incredibly inspirational. And there's no doubt that, you know, he stood for integrity, compassion and fairness. And from everything I've heard today, from everything I've read, he lived that way. He led this state that way. And many of the achievements have been mentioned before, but I too must take note of his changes to equal opportunity. And that many of us would not be here today had that not been for changes. His passion for social justice reform um, in, this, in the prison system, in creating a Solicitor General, in freedom of information legislation, that as we've heard, the list can go on. Greater government transparency is one of those other achievements. Um, but in a piece penned not long after his death by Don Woodward, he wrote, that many saw Mr Kane as a wowser, whose idea of a good Saturday night was to stay home and sort his sock drawer. Um, and I hear that that has been um, uh, repeated here today in, in various different ways. But I, I think we would all note that his record in government tells a very different story. Um, Sunday footy, the National Tennis Centre, Sunday trading, um, and also, he ushered in the first nude beaches in Victoria, despite his um, position on sunbaking, as it may be. Um, sadly, we've seen, we've seen those beaches rezoned and, um, and disappeared uh, in, since 2014. So, um, I would hope one day we may see a John Kane Memorial clothing optional beach <laughs> in this great state. Um, he revolutionised the sex industry uh, in Victoria and by legalising brothels, which was, a which was a world first. And I'm very pleased to see that the work that he did back then is continuing with the current review into the decriminalisation of sex work. Um, in 1983, when many state governments were in a moral panic about the advent of home videos, and the advent of adult videos, um, John Cain took a very different view. He actually felt that they were fairly um, dull, probably, was his words, but that, that there was nothing really that surprising about what you saw in those films. And even though legislation was introduced to prohibit the sale of adult films in Victoria, Mr Cain ensured that there was a sunset clause in that legislation that if non-violent erotica was to become a classification, that they would be made available again in Victoria. Um, sadly, that clause was, um, was, was, was never implemented. But um, uh, in recent days, in recent times, I've, I've had the opportunity and, and the great pleasure to share a lunch table with him, as well as be on numerous polling booths in Northgate, um, standing beside him. And uh, as many others have said, uh, he certainly was never backwards in telling me what he thought. Um, 
And initially, I'd, I'd have to say, he was almost cross that I'd been elected uh, and, and was very... Um, and forecast that uh, the minor parties and the crossbench would be the ruin of the democracy that he uh, felt this, this state deserved. Um, he also thought that the name of my party was absolutely terrible. Uh, uh, and um, he told me that actually many times. Um, that <laughs> but over the years, and, and he, you know, he did provide me with very good advice and his thoughts on many things. And, I, and, and like many of us, well, like all of us, I no doubt who had the opportunity to have those pearls of wisdom be, uh, dropped upon us, we all listened. But over the years, I have to say, his opinion of me did soften, and the opinion of the crossbench did soften. And he, um, he felt that, you know, maybe the corroding influence of the crossbench was not as bad as he'd first anticipated. Um, in fact, there was a number of times when he even conceded that it wasn't that bad, um, especially when we changed the name of the party. <laughs> I think what I've seen over this last um, few weeks since, since his death is the, the respect, uh, the, the, the generosity of comments that has come from everyone regardless of their political stripes. And I have to say that that, that, that shows the true man that I believe he was and that you know, we heard from so many people across, as I say, across that poli political spectrum that they absolutely respected the man, that they stood in awe of what he was able to, to achieve. Um, and I think, you know, today we do recognise that our state is a much, much, much better place for having John Kane here. Um, and I extend my condolences to his family.